Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023 WRC 23 here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio of Mr. Nigel Casimir, who is the Deputy Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunication Union. Nigel, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Now, I'd like to ask you, why is the World Radio Communication Conference an important event for the Caribbean Telecommunication Union? We are basically here as an organization to support our Caribbean member states, uh, basically to be as successful as possible in the conference. So, um, so that's, that's the importance of it to CTU, but to the Caribbean and the member states in general, wireless communications is, is key to connectivity generally. In the Caribbean, uh, we are also in more recent times trying to drive things like uh, digital transformation and so on. And it involves a lot of uh, mobile type uh, services as well. We are becoming more and more dependent on, I would say, the, 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 the use of mobile communications, wireless communications in general, satellite communications, all the things that are governed by the radio regulations. All right? And it's, it, it's a global communication environment that we are in and uh, the frequencies that are used for, for this wireless communication have to be globally uh, coordinated. So we are, we, are, we are all here, we are all dependent on it, so here we are. <laughs> now the Caribbean has got some quite severe weather at times and I think mm -hmm. uh, certainly things like early warning systems and that kind of thing, it must be of great importance to you as well. Indeed, early warning and, and also response type um, services as well, right? So, uh, we do a, a lot of disaster management planning, for example, all right? and uh, part of what the CTU would help um, our member states do is put in place the enabling environment and the, the, the preparatory tools as far as uh, communications is concerned. So very recently we've been uh, pushing, and in fact in our work plan for next year we'll be, we'll be trying to enhance the number of national emergency telecommunications plans that our member states have. Right now, it's, it's very few of them have that in place. Like, uh, basically, it's like a handful out of our 20 member states. So uh, that will be one of a, an important thrust for us uh, going forward. So uh, we have things like uh, Earth observation, for example. We have a uh, satellite uh, remote sensing, um, and then afterwards, say in a in a disaster recovery phase, you need to get communications to distressed zones. So terrestrial communications and satellite communications, they're all they're all very important, and that's just in the disaster scenario. But of course, we want to build our economies as well. It's all we are all basically developing countries. We we are driving the use of information and communications technologies. Uh, we are trying to digitize our economies, and all of this calls for the, um, the use of, of, of wireless communications. One last um, overall aspect I'd like to mention in terms of the Caribbean is that there is a, an aspiration approved by the heads of government to create a single ICT space. That is to create a zone within the Caribbean of harmonized uh, policies, legislation, and regulations associated with, with ICT. So uh, wireless is a great part of that. Looking at your members, you've got to say something in the region of 20 members there. They're obviously spread out a large region there. What are some of the challenges and opportunities regarding radio communications? Well, technology moves and we want to, to move with it and uh, adopt as quickly as possible. But regulations and uh, the pace of regulation doesn't move as fast as as the technology does so we're in addition to in addition to which adoption driving adoption is also a challenge um, so we as regulators the regula uh, in fact as policymakers and regulators in the caribbean one has to work on the side with the the technologists the people who want to uh, provide the technologies and so on, but one also has to work on the side of the users who have to be prepared and understand and uh, find um, the, the, the appropriate applications for, for the technology. And the, the policy makers and regulators have to put in place the environment so that 
all these things can happen and, and work harmoniously together for success. In terms of uh, use of wireless technologies as well, one special project we have with the ITU and one of our, and uh, the regulator in Trinidad and Tobago, in fact, is a, a, a project we call the Smart Seas Project, where we are seeking to enhance the communications that, uh, that, is, that, that, that can be used by our small scale fishers, basically for protection of their lives at sea. Right, so right now, uh, most of the fisheries in the Caribbean is done by small scale fishers. They basically have no communications on their small boats. And from time to time, we find that some of them get lost. Their engines break down or, or, or whatever. And um, this project is seeking to, to identify and basically um, facilitate the enhancement of communications for them, especially for emergency situations like that. What are some of the key outcomes that you hope will come from this World Radio Communication Conference? Well, coming into the, into the conference, there were uh, some important uh, agenda items related to, for example, um, IMT, um, satellite communications, as, as, as mentioned. Um, the, the so use of I, the... Let's go back over these a little bit. So IMT, mm -hmm. uh, IMT 2030, you're looking at, at 6G or are you looking at IMT 2020 and we, 5G? I would, I would say still IMT 2020 for the Caribbean. There's a special challenge in the Caribbean as a, uh, with respect to 5G. Our service providers are having, I guess, a greater challenge than in other parts of the world to create the business cases for implementing the 5G services. So that's a challenge for policymakers. So the policymakers now, are, and, and in fact, the CTU is assisting in, in this regard uh, in terms of coordinating the work of policymakers to put in place the appropriate incentives for this to happen, right? So um, that's one part of it, but we have to keep current with what's developing. Right, so on coming into, into this uh, WRC, we had, uh, for example, how do we use the six gigahertz band? We, we have a competition between IMT and the Wi-Fi alliances and, and, and so on, right? Um, that's a particular example. We would like to see that solved in a, certain, in, in a particular way. Um, IMT, I, I mentioned, in, in, in most of the Caribbean, we have very high penetration rates for mobile. Uh, this is an avenue for, it, for investment, development of services and so on. So we want to continue to ensure that we have all, these, all the, the, the spectrum we need to allow mobile to continue to grow. But apart from that, however, we are now being um, asked by new non-geostationary satellite uh, service companies to allow their services into the Caribbean. And it, it would help most of the Caribbean states are small, so, so, so they don't have large under, unserved areas. But there are exceptions to the rule in, in the CTU, Guyana, Suriname, Belize in particular, J Jamaica is also um, large in, uh, relatively speaking. And there are, even within the, the small territories, there are challenges of terrain, which would prevent your maybe wired solutions from getting there, even though it's not necessarily a very long distance. So there are pockets where we would need to use um, wireless communications to get into there. So we want to make sure that um, the results coming out of the, of the WRC would continue to uh, allow us to use existing and new and emerging technologies to solve our connectivity problems and our economic development problems as well. well thank you very much, Nigel, for sharing these wonderful insights with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wish you the very best of the future and hopefully you get the results that you want. Yes. Uh, and thank you for joining us in the studio today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then uh, do check out our other interviews at our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.